In this video, I'll discuss creating a sample design for hypothesis testing. Hypothesis testing is used when you compare a statistical value, like a site mean concentration, against another value, such as a regulatory threshold value. The concepts discussed here are fundamental to all the designs that compare an average to a fixed threshold, or to a background level. I want to explain the terminology in the context of a sampling design, so I'll go to sampling goals, compare average to fixed threshold. For hypothesis testing, you start with an assumed state called the null hypothesis, and try to provide enough evidence to reject that null hypothesis in favor of an alternative hypothesis. In most cases, you will assume that your site is dirty, in this case that the true average concentration of the site is at or above the action level, until you can provide enough evidence to confidently prove the site is clean that is, the true average concentration is below the action level. The evidence you will provide are samples from the site. The proving process is a statistical test. The purpose of the sample design process is to make sure you gather enough evidence, that is, enough samples, to prove your site is clean if it really is clean. If you don't provide enough evidence, you will have to continue to assume your site is dirty. We will never know with 100% certainty if a site is clean or dirty, that is, whether the true concentration is above or below the action level, unless every part of the site is measured. That's why we use a statistical test or proving process on samples from the site. In the proving process, the statistical test, there are two types of errors that can be made. First of all, you can conclude the site is clean when it really is dirty. This is a serious error called a type 1 error. How often the error occurs is called the alpha rate. This portion of the dialogue is where the type 1 error is controlled. The confidence is the complement of the alpha error rate. So, if the alpha rate is 10%, that means I have a 90% confidence in the test. This confidence is usually dictated by stakeholders who want to be very sure that a dirty site is not mistakenly called clean. This group of stakeholders would include the regulatory community. I'll say the stakeholders want a minimum of 95% confidence, or a maximum of 5% alpha. The next box is the action level for the contaminant in question. The source of your action level is controlled by your specific application, whether it comes from a published regulation or from some body of stakeholders. For this example, I'll say that it's 10. The other hypothesis test error that can be made is to conclude the site is dirty when it really is clean. This is called a type 2 error. How often this happens is called the beta rate. This next part of the dialogue is where we control the type 2 error. The gray region is a range of contaminant concentrations below the action level, where the cost of unnecessary corrective action is considered to be worth the error, because it would take way too many samples to prove it really is clean. The bottom of this range is called the lower bound of the gray region, or LBGR. The parties responsible for funding corrective actions, like remediation, would be the ones who set this value. So let's say they decided 8 was an acceptable bound. The next entry is the beta error, or how often they are willing for that error to occur at the bound. I'll say the responsible parties want a maximum of 10% beta error. So they are saying that if the true site average contaminant concentration is 8 or less, they want no more than a 10% chance of having the statistical test incorrectly tell them that the site is dirty and having to take remedial action. The final piece of information needed is an estimate of how variable you expect the sample data to be. This is often the hardest piece of evidence to acquire before doing the sampling. The standard deviation is a measure of variability of the sample data. It could be obtained from historical records or from a site similar to your study site. It may prove necessary to conduct a small pilot study to determine the sampling standard deviation of the contaminant on the site. I'll say we have sample data from a similar site and it shows a standard deviation of 3. The MQO button is useful if you have detailed standard deviation information about both the sampling variability and the analytical variability. Pressing the MQO button allows you to split the two types of variability and perform multiple analyses per sample. 
Press Apply or OK to apply this design to your project. Let's switch to the graph view to see a graphical representation of the sample design. The vertical red line is our action level at 10. We see the gray region with its lower bound at 8. The red curve shows the probability that the statistical test will conclude the site is dirty for the range of true but unknown site mean concentrations. So, if the true mean concentration is at 12, the test will virtually always show the site to be dirty. And, if the true site median is 6, the statistical test will correctly say the site is clean. But for these areas near the action level, the test might make mistakes. This point on the curve at the action level shows the confidence. The distance to the top depicts the maximum alpha error. The point at the lower bound of the gray region depicts the maximum beta error. Note that the y-axis gives the probability as a proportion from 0 to 1, rather than a percentage. Thank you.